Well, time now for AT&T call to the field. And for that, we bring in San Jose defender, a man of many talents, the energizer bunny of Major League Soccer, Tommy Thompson. How are you doing, Tommy Thompson? I'm doing well. It's good to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. We are so excited to have you on. We've been wanting to have you on this show for for a long time, but now feels like a a perfect moment because San Jose has made a statement in the MLS's back tournament. You guys win your group. Um, And I think this is one of the, it's one of the feel good stories that we've seen coming out of Orlando. So now that you've had kind of um, a a day or two to, to let it sink in, think about what you guys have accomplished, what your goals are for for the tournament. How did the Quakes get it done? How did you guys win this group, Tommy? Yeah, so we, we knew it was going to be a challenge. I mean, starting the tournament off against the MLS Cup champions is, is never easy, uh, especially because we weren't able to train as a team up until the very end of the, the, the quarantine period. So when we came to Florida – that was our first time being back together as a group. Uh, but I think it ended up working in our favor because we, we came to Florida. Uh, we, we were the first ones here. So I think it allowed us to get acclimated to the new environment and it allowed us to get acclimated to the weather. And uh, as soon as the tournament started, we were ready to go. Ever since you guys had that come from behind victory over the White Caps, you know, everyone's loving Matias Almeida. Uh, there's a lot of people jumping on the San Jose Earthquakes bandwagon. Are you here for it? <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. I know there is a lot of people doubting us, uh, but we, we're welcoming everyone into the bandwagon. So whoever wants to hop on, we're, we're boarding. I just want to I want to give myself some props. I actually I had you guys going through the whole time. So a lot of my colleagues did not. Now, I, did, I did not. I, it's on it's on MLSsoccer.com. It's published. I Now, I did not have you guys winning the group. I had you coming in second. So in that regard, I was wrong, but uh, well done. It's just been, it's been so much fun to watch. And kind of on that note, Tommy, we talk a lot about, you know, in these sort of tournament, uh, World Cup style tournament formats, there's always inevitably an underdog team, right? Or, or maybe several underdog teams. Do you guys think of yourselves as underdogs in the MLS's back tournament? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I, I think... We have a lot of confidence in our, in our locker room, and we showed what we could do uh, last year, especially the, the growth from 2018 to 2019. I think it was, it was obvious for everyone to see that, that, that we were a different team. Uh, but coming short of playoffs was, was a tough pill to swallow for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that took us off the map a little bit when it came to expectations for the MLS's back tournament. But there's never been any doubt um, that our team feels like we can go toe to toe with anybody in this league. So going into the tournament, we were confident. We knew a lot of people weren't talking about us. They weren't getting excited about us yet, but we knew we were ready to go. And I think it showed on the field. It, it totally did. And, you know, one of the guys that's gotten a lot of credit outside of the fact that this is one of those teams that you really feel like, just comes together as a team. Everyone seems to know their role and what's expected of them is, of course, your head coach, Matias Almeida. Um, He had definitely my favorite quote so far of the tournament. I believe he said it after your match against Vancouver, where he said, the world is living through a difficult moment. And I'll repeat, we're playing soccer in Disney. How could we not transmit happiness from the place we're at with this chance that they give us and the way that they treat us? How inspirational is this guy? <laughs> no, he, he's incredible. He's an incredible leader, and he's got a unique way of bringing people together, uh, regardless of the language you speak, regardless of the country that you come from. And that was why I started my Spanish jour- journey at the beginning of last year. <laughs> because I, as soon as I went to Cancun in 2019 with this group, and I saw the way that he interacted with us as a team and the way he treated us as just human beings. We were more than soccer players to him. I, I knew that something different uh, was going to transpire here with our team. And I thought it was a great opportunity for me to learn from one of the best leaders I've ever came across. So he's got an incredible way uh, of making a difference and bringing change to organizations. And it's definitely on display in this tournament. Love it. Go ahead, Jill. 
You mentioned Spanish. Um, I really enjoyed during our long MLS break, you and Almeida hopping on Instagram live and kind of having like a Spanglish back and <laughs> forth conversation. You know, Matias practicing his, practicing his English, you, your Spanish. Is that something you kind of like so many of us learned in high school and now you're kicking it up a notch or did you really dive into the books? Like, how did you get your Spanish to the next level to be able to hold an Instagram live with your coach? Yeah, that was that was a special experience. Um, but going into 2019, I, I didn't speak any Spanish. Uh, like I, I had been on teams with Spanish speakers like Anibal Godoy, uh, or Matias Perez Garcia, but I, I was never able to, to connect with them on that level and speak to them in their own language. Uh, but like I said, once Matias came in uh, and, I, and I saw the opportunity to be able to learn from someone who is just such a proven leader, in, in different leagues across the world. Uh, it, it was just too good of an opportunity for me to pass up. And so in that trip to Cancun, that first preseason trip, going into it, I didn't speak anything. But I spent like 30 to 40 hours on Duolingo over that two-week span. And uh, I came back from that trip ready to speak in interviews. And You're then- a genius. <laughs> How did you pick it up that fast? I'm so jealous. Yeah, it, it is, is it all Duolingo or what else are you using? Please help me. It was, it was all Duolingo, but then I, I, wow. I, have, I have a unique opportunity with this locker room. Um, there's a lot of different bilingual speakers and we have a full-time translator as well. So I'm just constantly asking guys, oh, should I say it in this way? Should I say it in that way? What does this word mean? Why did he use that in that way? Uh, and so over the course of just, you know, almost a year and a half now, it's allowed me to get to the point where I can have, you know, an hour long conversation uh, with Matias. But even even just a couple of weeks after that Cash. first trip, just a- after that first trip, I was ready for interviews. I, t- Tommy, it's not fair, okay? <laughs> because you are seemingly one of these guys that you're just kind of like good at anything you try. Um, if y'all paid attention during this quarantine situation, Tommy, uh, was a contestant on MLS Idol and showed off your piano playing skills <laughs> and your vocal chops. And it was so good. And I know, I mean, you dance, you sing, you play instruments, you do it all. Um, so has there been anything, I'm just wondering what you have added to your repertoire perhaps in this in this bubble situation. Like, have you picked up any new skills <laughs> since you've been there? Yeah, so that's a that's an interesting point that you bring up. That, 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 <laughs> that I'm good at everything. <laughs> The, 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 the piano and the dancing that actual concept of like that repetition to learn how to do a skill is why i was able to pick up spanish so fast because wow. it's actually really similar like the way i learned piano off youtube was very similar to how i learned spanish off duolingo and so it's basically just a process that, that you got to learn how to do and it, it's paid off so far. But during the quarantine period, I'd say the skill I learned how to do was uh, I learned how to coach kids online. And that, that was a completely new experience. And that, that was my new project, building up my YouTube channel and then using it to coach kids across the U.S. So that, that was my, my quarantine project. Real quick before I ask you a serious oh, cool. question. Al made a long hair or short hair? <laughs> yeah, good one, good one, good oh, one. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, Ooh, I, I do like it with the short because we've had such a great string of results, you know, so I, I'm, I'm starting to get used to it, but I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to say no to the long hair. What was your reaction when you saw that he had buzzed it? Cause I about had a heart attack. <laughs> I, I was definitely surprised. I was definitely yeah. surprised, but I, I, I knew that he saw the quarantine period coming and he wasn't gonna be able to go to the hairdresser. So I imagine he was just thinking ahead like he always does. Uh, Let's talk about someone else that impresses people. <laughs> Chris Wondolowski. <laughs> 161 goals. He's got two in this tournament. At 37, he's the oldest player to have back-to-back goals. You, you, you know, this could be Tommy Thompson at 37. <laughs> it really could. Like, going forever because, like, he's going to practice some new skill and it's going to give him longevity. Who the heck knows? But how does Chris, how does Wando do it? And is there anything Wando is bad at? 
<laughs> yeah, Wando. Wando is an anomaly. I mean, he's he's <laughs> literally. I've been playing with him for for seven years now, and I I still can't quite figure out how he does it. Uh, but he's actually my roommate on road trips. Unfortunately, now. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, he is. Oh god, that's too much smarts. I think I know. Head. I can't. I can't handle the talent. Yeah. So so now, obviously, in the bubble, you don't have a roommate, so we're not roommates right now. But normally, like all all throughout last year and the year before, any any away game, we'd we'd be bunking together, which was fun. But now he's he, he's an incredible player, incredible person, and it's unbelievable what he's doing right now. I am going to assign you for the common good of the world to find out Wando's secret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I, I know. If I had to guess, I think it comes from his will to win. I mean, his will to win is unbelievable. And it doesn't matter if we're playing darts, if we're doing like a 66 tournament, if we're just like betting on something random. So he's like Michael Jordan, you're telling me. Yes, exactly. That yeah, there's a lot of similarities to to Michael Jordan in in that last dance documentary. (laughs) It becomes personal to Wando. Personal. I'm gonna smash this header in the back of the net because it's personal. Right. Gosh darn it. Right. Um, Tommy, one of the things that people have talked about um, in regards to the San Jose team, especially in this tournament that has been sort of highlighted, is is the depth. You know, when you look at the um, the substitutions that have been made in these games, and now that there are, are, are you're able to use five subs, and you know, see like, these guys coming on, and you, it, it is so apparent how deep this San Jose team is no matter who the starting 11 is, there's always going to be people like Wando who can come in and, and be game changers. How much confidence does that give you guys? How much is that going to help you continue this run in the MLS's back tournament? Yeah. So it gives us a ton of confidence and and, and going back to that 2019 trip to Cancun, he told us it was what, it was one of the first things that he said, he says, Everyone on this team is going to run and everyone on this team is going to play. That's his mantra. And he's kept that mentality consistent all throughout the season last year and now the season this year. So everyone on this team believes that when they step on the field, they're ready to go. And everyone understands their role. Everyone understands the system. So we're ready to go. Whether someone's starting or subbing in, everyone's excited to contribute. And like he says, everyone needs to bring their grain of sand. And so far, so good. Let's go on to the evolution of San Jose. You know, 2018 finished bottom of the table. And you mentioned 2019 so many times, like going back to that preseason trip, it really felt like the beginning of a rebirth for the Quakes. But ultimately, San Jose last year kind of missed the playoffs after all that buildup. You just got this feeling that the team was out of gas. Is that fair to say? And how do you guys make sure that that this year's a little bit different? Like, why will 2020 be one notch better? Right. That's It's a good question. And, and for us, I, the last six games of last year were really disappointing. But the way I see it is that in every single one of those games, we were in it and things didn't go our way. Uh, there's a couple of different things that happened that, that we have to clean up and that's mistakes um, with and without the ball. Uh, but I think if we keep that same mentality, especially throughout that summer uh, period, we showed what we can do. And so for us, we have to just keep that same mentality and, and, and continually, believe, continually believing in uh, our system and what our team is capable of. And I, I think we showed it against Vancouver with the comeback. And I think we definitely showed it against Chicago as well. So so we're excited for the next game and we can't wait for for uh, the, the, the round of 16. All right, Tommy, I have a uh another question for you. And I feel like we're all friends here, right? Like you can, you're going to keep it real with us when I ask you this question, because one of the things that Jill and I have talked about as we've watched all of these games is the level of sweat that we have seen (laughs) within literally like a couple minutes of, of the match starting, even in warmups. I mean, guys are just uh, it's streaming down their face. It was most noticeable for the Miami players, I think, because they're kits were white and you guys have the white kits like a wet t-shirt like contest. it literally was like a wet t-shirt contest <laughs> yeah. how 
sweaty and how hot is it? Like, is it is it is it being accurately depicted? And don't give us that. Well, everybody's yeah. in it. We want to know. Yeah, like, how no, gross I want to know like how gross it is. How you feel after the game? How many jerseys you're bringing to the to the bench to change? Like, give us the real scoop here. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a question that needs to be asked because it, 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 <laughs> yes. even even sometimes when I'm watching the games, I'm looking at the players. I'm like. Wow, is that how we look? <laughs> yes, the that's, answer is yes. That's incredible. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's it's definitely an element that we're not used to, like playing in this type of humidity. Mm-hmm. That was a huge reason why we came to the bubble so early. Like I said earlier, we were the first team here because we had to yeah. get acclimated. But what's crazy is that the games that you guys are seeing uh, are at night, you know, or early in the morning. Right. Uh, but we had a number of sessions where we were playing up until like. 12 12 30 p.m and those sessions was just a different level like we had guys we had guys like taking off their socks and like wringing them out oh! like we had guys even like ah. changing their shorts like mid practice like it was so sweaty and so hot i can't was, imagine what that bus is like back but, to the showers i but, really can't by the end of the practice it felt like you had just jumped in a pool and so like running around in your shoes it just felt like you're almost wading in water. Oh, like, do you lose like, any weight it, though? Have you weighed yourself? Yeah, well, we do a we do a good job with the rehydration. You definitely lose weight after practice. Like there's guys mm-hmm. losing, you know, I can over get down five with that. pounds. Yeah, <laughs> like get over down five to pounds for a after few weeks. practice. But yeah, no. I, I, by the end of the practice during the day, it, you just hear the squishing. It just it, <laughs> it feels like you're playing underwater soccer. So once we got <laughs> yeah. through that, the games didn't feel as bad. We want a little info, a little insight as to uh, the secrets of the bubble. So first off, we've seen a lot of golf, some mini golf and some real golf. Who is the best golfer? And we just got off the golf course. Chris Wondolowski is for sure the great. The old man. Of course. He's got it down. Of course, he's got that down. (gasps) Big surprise. Who makes the best poolside playlist? Like who's bringing the the good tunes? That's me. That's me. (laughs) You have like some Spanish and some English songs in there. Yes. Oh yeah, we we got everything. We even got Dutch songs in the rotation now. For oh. Danny. <laughs> um, who Love who it. knows all the shows to watch? Who's got like all the binge worthy recommendations? That's Gorham Kasha. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. I didn't think of that. Who is the uh, the guy that's hitting the gym at five a.m. <laughs> even when you guys don't have to wake up that early? That's Nick Lima and JT Marcinkowski. Both of my roommates, actually, back in San Jose, they're always in the gym, always working out. Making Jeez, us look bad. Uh, who's the biggest gamer on the team? Biggest gamer? That's a tough one. That's also Vako and Gurum Kasha. They, they're, they play NBA 2K together. <laughs> they're, they're always on it. I love that. And then I just have one last question, Tommy. What is one thing about life in the bubble that people may not no. Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. I'm not sure if it's been communicated through the media. I haven't been following it too closely, but it's actually been a really positive experience for us. Uh, and it's like what Matthias said about being in Disney and being like the characters, like so much mm-hmm. those personajes. Uh, like we really do feel like that, and to have our own floor of the hotel and to, to be here, bring so much happiness to all the people in San Jose and across the, the U S I mean, it's, it's a special opportunity for us. And I, I don't know how well that has been communicated to the media, but I just want to say that on it hasn't been Jose. communicated all that well. I'll tell you that. So Tommy, <laughs> no. thank you for telling us that, you know what? And also I think people positive attitude goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. So that I would say thank is you. something that, people don't know about the bubble is that we've really enjoyed it. That's so beautiful. Oh, Tommy Thompson. Thank you. You've made us so very happy. You're the best. Um, <laughs> honestly, good, good luck the rest of the way. We're totally, totally cheering for you guys. You've been so much fun to watch and thank you for the time. Gotta love Tommy Thompson and uh, you gotta love the San Jose earthquakes and what they are doing in this tournament. And on that note, it is time for what's on tap Jillian Sakovitz and what is uh, on tap what is on tap and I'll I'll tell you what because a lot of people are looking for a team to get behind in this tournament and I'm yes and I'm saying 
coming off of that Tommy Thompson interview, especially get behind the Quakes. That can be your team of the tournament. He's they okay are with so the bandwagoners. So totally easy. no shame. He's- He is inviting you. He is inviting you along on this crazy journey that they are on. And they are so fun. So have you seen their celebrations, Jill, after? (gasps) Can I tell you my favorite one? Yes. So it's hot as heck, as Tommy told us. And you, you know, made sure to get that question in, which I thank you for. Um, but we're missing the fans. And Mm -hmm. instead of like the smoke going up, I think it's like an assistant coach or Uh Uh, the kit guy, he takes the cooling spray and is like this going nuts up with and it. Down. And yeah, he's jumping up and down like a supporter, but he's got the cooling spray. Um, that went wild on Twitter. Um, there's this is just a team that you feel like is fun to be a part mm-hmm. of. You got that feeling from Tommy Thompson and talking to him that this is kind of like the college dorms again. Like they are bonding, they are feeling good, they believe in their leadership. They're having fun and they're stringing wins together. Yep. So looking ahead, guys, and what's next, the San Jose Quakes, they're what's next. Don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them. They are a team that you can absolutely get behind. And uh, the, like same, the, the same zero, zero. Exactly. The same way that they celebrate with the magic spray, Jill and I celebrate with Heineken 0-0. Zero, zero. Cheers to that. Cheers. I need to watch, make a clink. Watch San Jose. I know. I know. Let's see. What can I clink? There we go. It's not the same. It's not the same. Um, I can't see you. Guys, we have so much. So there's going to be so much more soccer to talk about. And uh, we are so grateful for you guys listening and, and tuning in. Just think about all the fun stuff we're going to have to talk about the next episode. Jill. Guys, knock what? out. We learned in the 2019 playoffs. Knockout stage is no joke. You are in for weeks of knockout. Anything can happen. Get ready, Wolf. So much to talk about next. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Suze. Cheers. Cheers.